Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. And I'm here today to share another another lesson with you today on a, a fellow named Jacob. We saw yesterday how he plotted to steal his father's blessing from his brother Esau. And in fact, he does do that. So now we want to find out what happens next. So let's read this story. It begins in Genesis 27. It starts with chapter or verse 30. As soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and almost before Jacob left his brother, Esau returned from his hunt. Esau prepared a delicious meal, brought it to his father, and then sit up my father and eat my wild game, and you can give me your blessing. But Isaac said to Sam, Who are you? And Esau said, It's your son, your firstborn Esau. And Isaac began to tremble uncontrollably and said, Then who just served me wild game? I have already eaten it and blessed him before you came in. Yes, that blessing must stand. Let's stop here a second. Our culture doesn't have anything like this to identify with. But this is a blessing that's unbreakable. When Isaac blesses Jacob, even though Jacob connived to get it and wasn't eligible and didn't deserve it, even all of that, once the blessing was given, he couldn't take it back. So Isaac finds himself in a terrible situation. His own son has cheated in such a way that he, it says here he started to shake and tremble uncontrollably. Well, let's pick it up. Verse 34, when Esau heard his father's words, he let out a loud and bitter cry. Oh, my father, what about me? Bless me too, he begged. But Isaac said, your brother was here and he tricked me. He's taken away your blessing. And Esau exclaimed, no wonder his name is Jacob, for he has now cheated me twice. First, when he took my rights as the firstborn, and now he's stolen my blessing. Oh, haven't you saved even one blessing for me? And Isaac says to Esau, I have made Jacob your master, and I have declared that all his brothers will be his servants. I have guaranteed him an abundance of grain and wine, what is left for me to give you, my son? Jesus, uh, Esau pleaded, but do you have only one blessing? Bless me too. And then Esau broke down and wept. Goes on to say that from that time on, Esau hated Jacob because their father had given Jacob the blessing. And Esau began to scheme. And he said, I will soon be born in my father's death. Then I will kill Jacob. Well, this is a story about bitterness and conniving and cheating and deceiving and deliberately doing something to hurt several people. Jacob stole what was not his. And Isaac is uncontrollable. And Esau is madder than wet hen, as they used to say. He's going to get his vengeance. And Jacob is going to die. Well, this is a crazy place to leave you on an encouraging word, kind of a devotional. But let me look at it this way. I doubt any of us have been deceived to the level of this. Now, many of us have been deceived. I've been deceived. 
I lived with a woman for 37 years who left. And it turns out it wasn't the first time that she had been with someone else. And I felt betrayed. And I was. Just like Esau feels betrayed. And he was. And if you have experienced betrayal, okay, I understand that. The point being here, Esau declares his vengeance. He's forgotten something. He's forgotten that God is the God of vengeance, not him. He's forgotten that God is in charge of what happens, not him. And when you and I get betrayed, it's okay to feel betrayed and feel terrible about it, even angry and furious. But it's not our place to get vengeance. Now, we don't see that yet in this story. We'll get to it. But what we see here is the setup of a situation that isn't unlike many of us have experienced. We feel let down. We feel like they did something horrible against us, and, and they probably did. It's not so much what happens to Esau, as horrible as it is. It's what he does about what happens to him. Now, we're going to find out later that he doesn't carry out this thing, uh, and we'll find out why. And, but we'll save that. I, you you kind of want to jump over and finish the story, but I'll just wait. We'll get there in another day or two. But for right now, I just want to ask you to think about it. Have you ever felt betrayed? Have you ever honestly been betrayed? And if so, what have you done about it? Have you tried to get even? Have you tried to get vengeance? Have you vowed to destroy the other? And if you have, let me suggest something. That's not what God wants you to do. There's another way. There's a better way. I learned that personally through my experience. I learned it intellectually by reading the Bible. And if you haven't personally experienced it, great. <laughs> I hope you never get there. But if you do, just remember, God still loves you. God is still in charge. And God is still going to work things out in ways that you'll never imagine. Well, think about it. I hope you have a good day. I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to tell a little bit more about this story. And I want to tell you how much God loves you. Thanks for listening. If you have a need or a concern, let us know. We'll do everything we can as fast as we can to help meet your need. Take care of yourself. God bless you. I'll talk to you again.